Good afternoon and welcome to our final day of the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Grand Prix of Kuwait. I think it's safe to say this weekend is going to go down in history. One of the most talked about accidents that happened yesterday turned into a uh, good thing for Jessica Siobhan from France, but it was a huge tough break for Jonna Borkstrom and Emma Nelly Orton Dahl. I do want to share a little bit of the update on that. Both of the ladies are just fine. Um, in fact, they were back in the back hugging after the event. So I just want to say about that. Uh, everything is good, all's well, it ends well. But now we got an epic battle lining up for our final day. Kuwait witnessed the war between 13 incredible women. And not only in that, but in the ski class, even more incredible battles unfolded. Let's talk about that a little bit later. Today, it's all about who's going to cross that finish line and give their best racing. As you know, the final motos count the most in our world, so grab a helmet or your remote as we get ready for our final day of racing. We're underway at the 2020 UIM AVP Aquabike World Championship of Kuwait. And there's your view as the uh, ladies get ready for the Parade of Nations. But before we get too far down these roads of racing, we, uh, we've got to take a look at this incredibly vibrant city. Here's Kuwait. our first time for the UIM ABP Aqua Bike to be here in Kuwait and what a warm welcome you got and as well as we got you can hear in the background they've got uh, the life cycle guys going and they've had that great energy all weekend special thanks to them and Omar uh, can't go too much further either without saying a lot of this was uh, because of one of our racers Yosef Abdul Razak and uh, thanks so much for your uh, help putting this together not putting it together but getting us over here um, talking about putting it together, though, that all belongs to H2O, and special thanks to H2O Promotions. As I got to the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the racing yesterday, let's catch up with the young lady that ended up taking the win, Jessica Siobhan. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing because it's the first time for me, so I'm really, really happy. And uh, I'm sick since one month, so last night I had a lot of fever, so I'm really, really happy to, to, to win the, this, uh, this race. And uh, it's amazing, and I, I hope tomorrow uh, it will be uh, the same. <laughs> Welcome back live to the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Tour, the Grand Prix of, Ku uh, of Kuwait. Let's talk a little bit about yesterday. Jonna had a jam and start, led the entire race with Emma Huntinger with a fourth place start. By the end of that last, or at the beginning of that last lap, she was a second away from overtaking Jonna Borgstrom. Those two ladies met up on that front stretch, and that is when the drama unfolded just short of the finish line yesterday. Both of them uh, collided, went off the boat, didn't finish, yellow flag for Eminelli Ortendahl. Both of the young ladies were okay, but that caused uh, opportunities for the rest of the field, including Jessica Siobhan, who took that moto win and her first moto win on the UIM Aquabike World Championship Tour. Congratulations to you. Yasmin had a righteous start, but went down right before the first turn into the splits. That cost her precious real estate. Krista was second off the start and held that for three laps before she was called to shore for a 20-second penalty. Sophie was in third the first three laps, then in second after Krista was penalized. And unfortunately, uh, that set it up 
for a lot more drama for Krista and Sophie. Now, a lot of you were asking about the black flag yesterday. That occurred also on the front stretch. What happened? Krista went over the merge lane buoys, and she went into uh, what they call, uh, it's, uh, going, it's like going into onco oncoming traffic. You uh, went into the alternate course is the official term. Because she went into the alternate course, and Sophie Borgstrom followed her because of that, that's why the two young ladies got the black flag yesterday. All right, well, there's your recap. Talking about it, let's take a look at that accident. to see that crash in a couple of different uh, views and man what a yard sale extraordinaire again fortunately the boats were not hurt nor were the uh, two young ladies hurt back and ready to battle as we get ready to go for our final moto here in women's ski got the parade lap Got the parade lap coming at you. 22 nations representing here for 62 riders on this weekend season opener. And something's up with uh, Eminelli Ortendahl's boat. She's already got the hood off. Now, mind you, that could be part of the original problem in Moto One. So she was running very good in that first moto. What happened after that, though, she went over to the slalom course and started having problems with the coupler. Now, they had the opportunity to go to the backup boat yesterday, but as you know, that would have moved her to the far outside on the start. And it also gave her a uh, knife in a gunfight, if you will. And she chose to go with that original, the original boat, and now it looks like they might have some issues with it. Let's see if everything's going to be okay for this young lady. A part of Team Abu Dhabi, and uh, you can see the team down there checking on her to make sure she's okay, and it looks like after a quick look, she's going to go do a warm-up and see if that boat's going to be all right. So a tense moment as uh, we get ready to go for your defending world champion, Eminelli Ortendahl. A ton of people have uh, already do dove in onto the feed. Susie Gilbert, good morning. Aaron Jones, hi from Australia. Hi there, Harley, and uh, saying go Molly. Yep, you Prow saying go Yasmin. Diogo saying go Jonna, and of course Simon Metacraft, go Kylie. Well, in an interesting uh, turn of events after practice today, it looks like Jessica Siobhan actually is lining up on the pole position on the outside split versus where uh, we've been seeing a lot of the ladies line up on the inside split. So your uh, lady that won in moto number two yesterday is lined up on the pole position outside. They must know something we don't. Right next to her is going to be the uh, lady that came in second. Estelle Pere also lined up on the outside. Next to her is going to be Janina Johansson. And then right next to her is going to be uh, Sophie Borgstrom, a.k.a. Mini Minion. On the inside pole position, it's going to be Joanna Grassa. And Yasmin E. Prouse is next to her. And then Virginia Morales is third on the inside. And then you've got Jonna Borgstrom and uh, Eminelli Orton-Dahl lined up on the outside of the inside. Well, that might explain why Jessica Siobhan chose to move to the outside pole. She's like, I'm not even going to be a part of that drama. Save that drama for you, mama. As we get ready to go with moto number three in our final moto. Oh, my gosh. So many uh, wonderful things being said about uh, these ladies racing yesterday. Ellen Carlson, go get them, Jonna and Sophie. You both raced like daredevils yesterday. Big kisses for Manny. Please don't crash today. Christopher Heislip, Dawn, any Americans over there racing? Nope, not, uh, not in the women's class, not yet. But uh, I absolutely think there should be. Good morning, Jao Conciero. Good to have you. And Abby Fern uh, also has signed on. That's uh, Molly's mom. 
Shout out to her as well as we get ready to go for moto number three. It's our final moto. It's going to be a 15-minute moto plus one lap for the ladies. And uh, you can just look out over the shoulder of Lisa Kassan Battaglia. She's lined up on the outside of the outside right next to her. Kylie Elmers on boat number 13, who's uh, going to be punching the clock in dual duty this weekend. She's been racing both in the runabout class and the stand-up class. We are moments away from our start. You are watching us live with the Grand Prix of Kuwait. What a weekend. Yes, me and Prouse bouncing up to the beach. She's in rare form, and she had a great start yesterday. She looked like she was going to have an opportunity to get a whole shot, but uh, she went down right on that final turn before they went into the split section, costing a ton of real estate for her. That is the worst place, as you know, that you could go down. All the riders so bunched up, you lose a lot of time really quick. Sandis Laube saying, go, Krista. One point eight kilometer course for the stand up riders. And the engines are started. We are doing this beach start as you see it. That was fast. Joanna Grossa from Portugal with a good start on the inside split. She's got very impressive uh, company. Jonna Borgstrom and Eminelli Ortendahl are gonna be charging from the outside of the inside. And meanwhile, it's Yasmin Eprous on the uh, Whole shot position for the inside split. Good start for Yasmin, and it's Emma Nelly Ortendahl in second, and Jonna Borgstrom in third. All of that happening on the inside. Let's take a look at the outside split. And that goes to Jessica Siobhan, who has been fighting an illness all weekend. And Jessica Sean, uh, Siobhan with a huge push, not going to be enough to overtake that inside. That is going to be Yasmin Eprous on the on the whole shot official call. Jessica Siobhan in uh, leading and then it is, or excuse me, Yasmin Eprous leading Jessica Vaughn in second. Eminelli Ortendahl in third. Kylie Elmers in fourth. All right, there's your shot along the uh, back stretch. Yasmin E. Prow still rolling. We were just uh, adjusting our screens here as we got ready to go. So thank you for letting me be quiet a second as Yasmin comes through that final double right hand turn. And now she's gonna go back to the inside split. And as you know, the uh, course marshals have been watching these splits over the weekend very carefully. They made quite a few adjustments to the splits this morning. And I think the uh, ladies are feeling like that inside split is pretty wicked because that's where they went. So Yasmin E. Prouse goes to the inside. Jessica Siobhan went to the outside again. Eminelli Ortendahl. Third, Kylie Elmer's fourth. And uh, Jonna Borgstrom, oh, there we go, Jonna Borgstrom in fifth. And we got our times up as well. Yasmin E. Prouse. Yasmin E. Prouse with a 14956. Jessica Siobhan with a 14994. Eminelli Ortendahl with a 15171. And there is the opportunity for those guys to uh, take a look at that backstretch. As I talked about yesterday, this backstretch is deceptively simple looking. It's a straight shot from the left-hand side of the track 
not too much drama. They don't have to dive in and pick up any extra buoys. Here's the challenge, though. The waves are going at a cross section. Which is uh, causing those guys quite a bit of challenges. Jan Jensen went off very hard yesterday. And I'll get you that timing just as soon as uh, we get an update on it. You've got Yasmini Prouse on the inside, Jessica Siobhan on the outside. Oh, this is close. Yasmin stayed low in the tray and trying to get some hookup and actually coming across that stretch. I would say that uh, Jessica Siobhan had a little better hookup on it. Meanwhile, Eminelli Ortendahl aboard uh, that QB boat. Back in third. And Kylie Elmers having to uh, get a stop-go penalty. Now, what happens on that is if you have a premature acceleration, premature start, what they'll do is they will call you. They'll let you know that they are going to penalize you for it. And you have two options at that point. You can come in and take the 20-second penalty, or you can continue the race. And if you take the 20-second penalty, you've got two and a half laps to do that. You have to take that, pull in, and stop for that 20 seconds if you're going to accept that you had the penalty. Now, if you want to fight that, if you want to fight that penalty, then uh, what you do is go ahead and go. And then you have to go in and uh, protest because it will be locked against you. So you'll notice that Kylie Elmers went in and took that 20 seconds, and she's back out on the track, but that did cost her. Yasmini Prouse, the 14948. Lap three is what we're on. And this is a new change. You've got Yasmin going to the outside. Point six oh seconds between Yasmin E. Prouse and uh, Jessica Siobhan. Point five three seconds in this race. We got a 15 minute moto plus one lap. Yasmini Prouse on that back stretch. Again, her fastest lap time was 14948. Current time, 152. So uh, we're having a little bit of challenges on the uh, internet, no problem. Oh my goodness, Jessica Siobhan had snuck in, in that uh, series of turns, got around Yasmin E. Prouse, and that pushed Yasmin back two spots. Eminelli Ortendahl now up in second. Jessica Siobhan is on her way to her first Grand Prix win. She is currently in the lead with uh, 41 points. And if she holds that spot, she's locked it. And in fact, the only way that uh, Eminelli's in second right now, Eminelli came into this after that uh, DNF yesterday, came into this round with 22 points. And the only way that uh, she would have a well, actually, she still wouldn't have a prayer of uh, getting the second. She might grab the podium, but only if Jessica actually DNF'd. So chances for a podium, pretty tough for Eminelli and really good for Jessica Siobhan. Estelle Perret came in second yesterday. She has 37 points. She's only four points off. And 
we'll get you that rundown. You're watching Yasmin in third. Donna Porks from right behind her in fourth, and then you've got Estelle Perret back in fifth. And now the battle. Taking a look at the top two ladies, it is Jessica Siobhan and Eminelli Ortendahl. Still waiting on timing. So Jessica Siobhan with a 14816 and Eminelli Ortendahl with a 14977. We're on lap number five. Those are your first two. Yasmeen E. Prouse in third. She's got a 15755 on that uh, current lap. And Jonna Borkstrom in fourth with a 15266. Estelle Perret in fifth with a 15032. And Sophie Borkstrom in sixth with a 15121. Krista Uzar in seventh. Lisa Kassan, Batalia in eighth. Virginia Morales in ninth. Joanna Grassa in uh, tenth. And Kylie Elmers in eleventh. Estelle Perret is uh, who we've got the camera on. Estelle in second place with 37 points. Up in uh, that fifth place spot for Perret. She just came off of the double. She's on the right hand side of the track. She's gonna go uh, pick up a inside split. And Jonna Borgstrom went down right in the uh, right hand side of the track. Jonna went down. That's going to cost her. Sorry about those delays, guys. Trying to get our timing up on uh, this laptop next to us. And I was having a bit of challenges, so we've worked around the problem, but been a bit distracting trying to get that fixed so we can get you the timing. On the back stretch, that is Jessica Siobhan. As we are 12 minutes, 41 seconds into the race. And it is Eminelli Ortendahl in that second place spot. Siobhan with a 14990 and Eminelli Ortendahl with a 14912 in second. Yasmin E. Prouse in third, 15058. Estelle in fourth with a 15231. And Sophie Borgstrom is in uh, sixth place.
check, check. Okay, we're back again. <laughs> All right, 13, we have 14 minutes on the clock. Jessica Siobhan, best time, a 14709, and Emma Nelly Orton Dahl in second with a 15187. Yasmin E. Prouse in third, and Estelle Perret fourth. Sophie Borks from fifth, Krista Uzar in sixth. There is your quick rundown, and you've got your eye on the young lady that is two laps away from her first Grand Prix, and all of that unfolded yesterday. She uh, came in with the win yesterday, and then in her moto, first moto, she had a fifth place, and those two were good enough to give her 41 points. And the young lady behind her, Eminelli Ortendahl, your defending world champion, fighting for an opportunity, and it's going to be a tough opportunity to uh, try to get at least to the podium. Jessica goes to that outside. Now, mind you, Eminelli's uh, had problems with the boat. The coupler has been uh, giving her fits. She is riding that original boat. Oh, she went to the inside, and it is close between Emma and Ellie Orton Dahl as the white flag comes out, and Emma and Jessica getting closer. Emma took a quick look over, making sure that she's on that last lap. The charge begins. And I'm sure at least momentarily she had in the back of her head, I want to get around her on this lap lap, but I don't want to take myself out. So Siobhan, Ortendahl, E. Prouse, and Pere, Sophie Borgstrom, and Krista Uzar. Jessica Siobhan. That's the final part of the stretch. Still got this tricky little section. Check this craziness out. So they come off the stretch. They have that uh, double off of the back stretch and then another double of the reds. And then look at this little quick two single she has to hit. Then she comes back to um, a double right hand turn. And then she goes into the uh, split section. Taking the outside again on the final lap. Interesting. <clears throat> and I'll tell you why, because she's in lap traffic. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so we have Jessica Siobhan in lap traffic as she comes through. And we've got Eminelli Ortendahl right behind her, but Emma also had lap traffic. Congratulations to Jessica Siobhan. She is getting very close to uh, Got it, took the win. Who would have thought it? Yeah, really, how amazing. Jessica Siobhan, her first Grand Prix, and Eminelli Orton Dahl for second. I don't even think she realized she nailed it. So again, your winner from France, Jessica Siobhan on the 99 boat, and that's gonna make easy math for her. Ah, true. Well, let me just say this now so I can always disclose that immediately. Remember, nothing's official until we get the official results. So I'll give you my official provisional. <laughs> it's actually just provisional estimate of how that ended out. So again, Jessica Siobhan provisionally taking the win in the Grand Prix for the GP of Kuwait. Estelle Pere with that uh, fourth place finish and Yasmin E. Prouse with the third place finish. Gonna be enough, I think, to give Yasmin second, we're checking. Ooh, okay, thank you. All right, here's how it looks. 
unofficially until they get through tech and all the other cool things they have to do. Jessica Siobhan with the win. <laughs> and uh, Yasmin E. Prouse in second. And Estelle Pere in third. for uh, this young lady from France. Jessica Chabon has never had an opportunity to uh, get to the top of this podium twice in a weekend and then nailing a Grand Prix. It's gonna be a pretty exciting award ceremony for this young lady. She ended up uh, sixth overall in 2019. What a great day for uh, Jessica. She's an engineer, by the way, in her day job. She sure engineered a, a great finish. Now, mind you, she has been pretty sick this weekend. She was actually running a fever when she first got down here. Been doing a little bit better, but uh, hopefully that'll clear up for this weekend. But that's the best medicine ever, I think, to take a big win like that. All right, we are uh, done with the ladies, and now we'll be moving on to the men. Do be sure and check out the website for the official results on aquabike.net. Abby Fern saying, well done, Jessica. Tell you what, we'll be right back to talk about the men class in just one minute. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Kuwait. And I had a couple of questions on the website, uh, just to answer that for you. You, uh, you have the option, actually, of what country that you race under, just like the Olympics. Uh, some of these guys might compete under uh, different countries, maybe born in USA, but they live somewhere else. So the situation with uh, uh, Kylie and uh, some of these other riders is that they will race under different um, different licenses, a different flag. So you'll notice Kevin Redder from Austria actually racing for the UAE this year. He is uh, being sponsored by and rides for the victory team for the UAE. And with Kylie Elmers uh, from New Zealand originally, but also uh, can be sporting different flags. I hope that answers your question, Aaron Jones. And our Parade of Nations is uh, getting ready to go. Kevin looked like he was going to cruise to another moto win after a sweet move yesterday through the through the inside split to pass Stian. And uh, speaking of that, let's catch up with Stian Schwetline. Uh, I felt pretty good. Uh, it was a really bumpy ride the last moto, and with some luck, I managed to climb back up to third place after a little bit of a bumpy first two laps where I got knocked down to like five or six. So uh, overall, I'm very happy with the moto, and uh, especially the first moto, and I have a good chance of taking the overall for this weekend, and that sets me in a really good position for for the season to come. <laughs> All 
All right, so I, as I talked about, Kevin Redder with a hole shot yesterday and looked like it should have been a cap to a great day after his win in Moto 1, but by lap eight, even the tide was moving faster than Kevin's boat was. And just like that, the easy victory for the victory team wasn't so easy. Kevin ended up 16th yesterday. Lucas Bernard had a stellar start from the outside split and was also cruising along in second for about la six laps. And then things went from bad to worse. Nacho got around him. Then Luca went off on the boat uh, on the front stretch. While the Loca La Vida Spaniard, Nacha Armia, soared into the wind from his third place start. After exhaust problems in Boto number one, victory could not be sweeter for the gentleman from Spain. Meanwhile, Michael Perret worked to third in the season opener. And how fun is it to have the Perets back in Minsky? Currently on your scoreboard, it is Stian Schvetlein in the lead for this Grand Prix of Kuwait with 42 points. Nacho Armias in second with 40. And Michael Perret in third with 40. Artemis Zabo right in the hunt with 34 points. He's in fourth. Abdullah Alamadi representing for the UAE is in fifth with 30 points and Kevin Redderer is tied for fifth with 30 points. There's your recap and the setup for moto number three. We talked about the riders uh, under different flags. Nacho Armias riding for Spain, Michael Perret, France, Stian for Norway, and Dan Anderson also for Norway. How about that epic battle between Dan Anderson and Stian Schvetlein yesterday? And let's get a recap too of Anderson. You know, in the first one, he was having problems with his battery. Uh, an electrical and he thought he got that fixed but then they went back out in moto one and uh, moto two and the boat kept cutting out on him and that was part of the problem and the drama when you saw him get off the boat yesterday afternoon that was part of what was going on is that he had had that boat just keep cutting out on him when he was trying to make these passes despite all of that dan anderson and moto number two ended up with that uh, fourth place finish Anderson currently in 11th overall. All right, we're going to grab these guys and pull it back in. Yeah, it's going to be Nacho Armias on the pole position. Check this out on the inside. And it's going to be Stian Schvetlein also on the inside right next to Nacho. Salman Alawadi is going to be on the inside. He's third on the inside. And it is going to be uh, Barnabas Zabo, fourth on the inside. Oliver Hansen is uh, lining up on the inside split. So is Andreas Guidi. And it looks like Kevin Redder also lined up on the inside. Mad Hansen lined up on the inside. And Abdullah also lined up on the inside. It's going to be Michael Perret, who's got the pole position on the outside split. So the poles are going to Nacho Armias on the inside and Michael Perret on the outside. And Dan Anderson's right next to Michael Perret at a great start for Stian Schvetlein. And Nacho Armias had a good start and had to make a correction because he was a bit off course. In order to get around the green buoys, he had to cut back into the left slightly, and that might cost him. Well, holy unusual upsets. This young man has been showing such great signs of brilliance. It is boat number seven, Salman Alawadi on the inside split. 
and he is set up for his first ever hole shot and he nailed it and it's Lucas Benar in a repeat of yesterday in second, Stian Schwentlein in third, Ulrich Bernson in fourth and Kevin Redder in fifth. Michael Pere in sixth, Barnabas Zabo in seventh, Dan Anderson in eighth, and Nacho Armias after that uh, course correction back in ninth place. Well, that was a uh, very interesting start, and I had a suspicion that something was going to get a little wonky there because as they took off, and they'd actually lined up as far as they could uh, on the left-hand side of that beach to try to get a straight line in it, but last minute, Nacho Armias had to make that correction on the buoy, and sure enough, that cost him a uh, opportunity at a hole shot on the inside. Meanwhile, the young man on boat number seven, that's Salman Alawadi, out of the UAE, who has the uh, hole shot on that inside split, and he is currently in the lead. It is Lucas Benar who had the hole shot and was actually in second, or not hole shot, but he had second place yesterday and was up in second for six laps. Right now he's back in second again. And Salman Alawani goes to the outside split. Lucas having to make a little quick correction, and Lucas almost off his boat. He chooses to go to the outside. And Stian Schvetlein following him to the outside and almost uh, Stian a couple times in his tray. Meanwhile, Kevin Redder alone on the inside split. Will he be able to move from fifth up to third? Could happen right here onto the front stretch. Meanwhile, Salman Alwadi uh, walking away with it. And sure enough, Lucas Bernard gets through, but Kevin Redder now up in third. Stian Schvetlein in fourth. Michael Pere in fifth, Barnabas Zabo in sixth, and Dan Anderson in seventh. And the current lap time for Saman Alwadi, 1-4-1-2-1. Lucas Benar with a 1-4-4-3-6. And Kevin Redder, holy, I've got a whole lot of horsepower with a 1-2-8-2-5, a good 20 seconds. About 15 seconds, actually, faster. He's only 5.6 seconds off the leader at the moment. Kevin Redder in third. Kevin coming into this round in sixth with 30 points. Your race leader, Stian Schvetlein, with 42. So he's got his work cut out for him. Salman Alawadi back in eighth, uh, coming into this round with 26 points. Definite shot at grabbing a podium. Salman Alawadi comes into that split section. Question's going to be after watching uh, how much ground Kevin made, will he choose inside or outside? He goes to the outside split. Last year, his best was a, a third in Moto 1 in Qingdao. Ended up ninth overall in the World Championship Tour in 2019. He's only 18 years old. Rides for uh, Team Abu Dhabi, and he is rocking uh, this lead with, uh, last we checked, it was a six second lead. And Kevin Redder comes out of the split section, nails it, and gets around Lucas Benar. He's up in second. 14048. Kevin Redder, 14154. Lucas Benar, 14377. Sheehan Schvetlein with a 14279 in fourth. Barnabas Zabo in fifth with a 14282. Barnabas got around uh, Michael Pere. 6.74 seconds off the leader. And your current points leader, Stian Schvetlein in fourth. Nacho Armias, the gentleman who uh, took the win yesterday in motor number two, is currently in eighth. His lap time was a 14165. And that single mistake turned out to be very costly for Nacho Armias. He's only moved up or had an opportunity thus far to move up one position. Now, mind you, this is uh, five minutes into a 17 minute moto, so it's 17 minutes plus one lap. These guys are going to get to negotiate. Last time uh, we were looking at them yesterday in Moto2, they had upwards of uh, 15 laps that they were dealing with. Saman Alawadi 
with a 14048, which, by the way, was his fastest lap time, and that just happened to be on lap number three, and I can guess why. Salman Alawadi riding for Team Abu Dhabi, and he has got to be stoked to uh, be able to be riding in front of Kevin Redder. Kevin's reduced the time quite a bit. 6.74 between uh, Kevin Redderer and uh, Saman Alawadi on the last lap. You would like to know what it is now, I'm sure. 2.5, two, excuse me, 2.28 is all that separates these two right now. Both riders jumps to the uh, back stretch. Saman Alawadi uh, feeling the pressure, but look how calmly he is dealing with it. Nice turn for him, and he doesn't give Kevin too much opportunity off of that turn. He left it very tight, kept the door shut. Oh, he goes down! Salman Alawadi just biffed a little bit over on the side of the boat. Kevin Redder, your new race leader. Exactly what I was talking about on that back stretch. It's deceptively simple looking. It was a straight shot from left to right on this right side or right hand course. And Salman Alawadi just got to a uh, little bit sideways on that boat. And one of the waves grabbed the uh, side of the boat and it was enough to roll it over. He held on to it. but the uh, course design, putting it just a bit off camera to the waves made that very tricky. And we've seen that on the front stretch as well. Already back up, he's in the uh, outside split and he is holding on to second place. Meanwhile, Kevin Redder comes through with a 128 is his fastest time. His current lap time of 1.4271. Stijic Fetline is uh, under attack. He's gotten around Lucas Benar. Luca not really wanting to give that up. He was in third. stijic has got a 14694. Lucas Benar with a 14884. And Luca's still putting the pressure on Stijic Fetline. Sweeping wide into that uh, technical double. They're going to go into a, a triple turn. And it's an off camber turn, and Stijic Fetline protects that line. Another off camber. You can see this is a uh, double red that they had to go hit before they went to the back stretch. And you can see those two buoys side by side. That's your indication they're going onto the back. And you've just got to look at um, Michael Pere and Barnabas Zabo as well. All right, here's your official uh, on the ski ladies, Jessica Servan taking the win, Yasmin E. Prouse in second, and Estelle Pere in third. And those are your official results. They'll be posted on the website for you. Once again, congratulations to Jessica Siobhan from France. There's your shot of Lucas Bernard, who got a uh, second yesterday for six laps before he went down on the front stretch. Barnabas Zabo currently up in fifth, right behind it. Barnabas going to the inside. Looks like uh, Lucas Bernard choosing to go to the outside split, and that might be costly. Let's see as these two guys meet up on the front stretch. Meanwhile, Saman Amani in second, Sheehan in third. Lucas Bernard just holding Barnabas Zabo off for that fourth place. Barnabas pushes wide on the front stretch, and he's going to try to sweep him on that triple right-hand turn off of the front stretch. Barnabas just elected yesterday as our new riders rep, and he has been looking great out on the course this weekend. Nice setup on that turn. By the way, he's riding uh, one of QB's boats. He's on a Quentin Bosch QB1 boat, and he has been uh, doing quite well. Had a 20 of a 14, so 34 points right now, putting Barnabas right on the bubble for a podium finish. He had a third place finish and a uh, seventh place finish. But that consistency is looking good. Zabo currently in fifth. 
14008 for the current lap time for Kevin Redder, Salman Alawadi with a 14327. 13 seconds between the top two. The interesting thing to note here, Stian Schvetlein up in third with a uh, 15 second uh, miss off of the lead. Went from fourth place to third for Stian Schvetlein. Stian has had a great weekend. He got a second in moto number one and a third in moto number two. And his consistency is what's got him at the top. Stian comes through and it's side by side between Lucas Bernard and uh, Zabo. And Zabo's got the line on that inside line with the sweeper turn coming up. Oh, Lucas Bernard shut the door hard on part of his Zabo. He had just enough momentum on that to literally knock that door closed. Zabo. Interesting. So Lucas Bernard uh, in that fourth place spot, Zabo in fifth. That was amazing. And that Michael Pere back in sixth place. Left hand side of the track for Michael. Pere had a pretty good start. He had to work from the outside of the outside for that. Started out in sixth. Hold it solid. Meanwhile, Zabo in fifth. Kevin Redder just coming onto this front stretch. And uh, we'll hit catch his time while we continue to watch this battle. And you can see Armias getting into this mix as well. Nacho Armias in seventh. Let's watch as these guys go into that split section. This could get incredibly uh, interesting because the time's very close for both of them. Zabo's lap time was 142.07. Stian goes to the inside. Lucas to the outside. Salman Alawadi at second. Stian Schvetlein at third. Lucas Benar in fourth. Part of his Zabo in fifth. And Dan Anderson, uh, or excuse me, Michael Pere pushing right on over and shutting the door on Nacho Armias. Because Nacho tried to get around him on that front stretch. Michael in six, Nacho Armias in seventh. Anderson in eighth. And the time for Red Rear 13682. Salman Alwadi, second, 14317. And uh, Stian Schvetlein with 14230. Thirteen and a half minutes into the 17 minute plus one lap moto. We're on lap number eight. As you know, Ma Nacho had that exhaust leak in moto number one. They went back and uh, worked on that very intensely yesterday. Put together a fantastic run in moto number two for the win. This is gonna be his first full season back on the UIM ABP Aquabike uh, World Championship Tour. And great to see him after half a dozen surgeries as he posted on his Facebook last night. There's the double red and uh, that is just part of this quick series. Look at uh, how fast they have to go through that. That's the two single buoys and then he had another double he had to hit. And then he has to pick which one of those splits. So a very intense technical section through there before they ever even get into the split section and it looks like Nacho Armias goes to the outside. All right, Salman Alawadi come through in second and it does look like uh, Stian Schmettlein starting to pick it up. Salman with a 14548 on that lap, Stian Schmettlein with a 14470. Redder, Alawadi, Schvetlein, Benar, Zabo, and Pere, and Armias. No change from the last lap of the top seven. Going to be one of the best finishes uh, for Lucas Benar. Kevin Redder, the gentleman currently leading. Last year, 
was a stellar year for this victory rider. Took every win except for a second place in Olbia, and that was because of the legendary battle happening between uh, Kevin Redder and Quentin Bosch last year. I don't know if you guys remember that, but but uh, he actually uh, went head to head with Quentin Bosch, rolled the boat, then came back and took the win and the overall. It was an incredible weekend of racing. Redder's fastest lap time is this 12825 that you see posted, but the 14172 is his current lap time. Can't talk enough about the young man from the UAE, 18 years old, that is Salman Alawadi. And Salman Alawadi rides for Team Abu Dhabi. What an incredible racer. We've watched him since he's been a junior racer, and this guy has been nothing but spectacular. So it's great to see him get the whole shot. And uh, really good to see him still in second place, watching Salman Alawadi and the rest of the gang here in a men's ski GP. You're watching the final moto of three. 17 minutes is what we've got to have on the clock before uh, they get the white flag. So Kevin Redder should be seeing the white flag on this lap. Oh my goodness, Lucas Bernard went down again. No. Two for two, not good. That is a heartbreaker for uh, Lucas Bernard on uh, boat number 87. Yesterday he went off on the front stretch after six laps in second place. <coughs> And man, and another one coming in. Axel uh, Courtois having engine problems. Kevin Redder, easy sailing. Took the win in Moto One, no drama. And then came out and took the whole shot as the white flag comes out for uh, Kevin Redder. Took the whole shot and then was leading for eight laps of that race yesterday. Everything seemed to be going easy sailing, and then suddenly he was going slower than the tide was. Engine problems for uh, Kevin, and then he had to uh, ring it back in today. Axel Courtois still just cruising slowly around the Still white flag out, Saman Alawadi, no dramas for him, but right behind him, a ton of dramas. Barnabas Zabo putting the push on Stian Schvedline. Redderer, Alawadi, Schvedline in third, Zabo in fourth, Perey in fifth, Nacho Armias up in sixth. The time for Alawadi has been a 14753 on that lap. Stian Schvedline with a 14536. But Zabo on that lap was a 14323. You can see that Zabo, Barnabas Zabo is pushing. Oh, and he goes down on that turn right towards the back stretch. Shockingly, he uh, managed to block Pere, even though he went down. Pere wasn't able to get around him. Wow. And as the gentleman hits the front stretch, it is all about Kevin Redder for uh, moto number three and a good redemption run for this final moto. We'll see if that's going to be enough to get him up onto the podium. Doubtful, but uh, we don't know. You just don't know. We'll add up those points in uh, just a second. Meanwhile, one of the best finishes uh, could be happening here shortly, and that is for Salman Alawadi. Let's see. Coming to the outside on this final lap, and Lucas Bernard right ahead of him on cruise control. Now, interesting, you got lappers on both inside and outside. Congratulations to Salman Alawadi with the second best ever finish in the pro class for Salman Alawadi. And Team Abu Dhabi uh, down there to uh, congratulate him. And this is unofficial, of course. She and Schvetline held it for uh, third place finish. Zabo fourth. Armias up in fifth, Pere in sixth, Anderson seven, Burnson at eight. Times once again on that lap. One four one ten for Kevin Redver and a one four two seven nine for Salman Alawadi. 
respectable run on that uh, 14368 for Stianch Fat Line and Barnabas Sabo 14756. We'll be right back after the short break and also some numbers. We are back live as we are calculating some points here for you. I'll get back to you as soon as we've got those. We've been watching the men's ski class. Coming into this, we had Stiage Fetline with 42 points. Nacho Armias was in second with 40, and Michael Pere in third with 40. Barnabas Zabo in fourth with 34 points massive motos for these riders as we get ready to go with the runabout class. Great feedback on the live feed. Eric Jacobson, great job to stay in. Karina Dronge saying uh, also congratulations for a great run to stay in. Now this moto is going to be 25 minutes plus a lap. Here's the recap on uh, yesterday. Rashid Altair proved his medal and rolled his lucky fiber boat across the finish line just like he started in the first place spot. Perez had second locked in on the start, but that wily Kuwaiti Yosef Abdul Razak stole it from him on a bold punch of power off that front stretch. Speaking of Yosef Abdul Razak, let's catch up with him. Huge waves coming from each angle in the back stretch, and you have some yachts that leave the marina, and that caused a big wave. I think I flew from one of those, but uh, you know, have to be careful, do my best, and uh, guess for, get first, and see what the overall gets me. Once again, that back stretch provided dramatic endings for several riders to include Jan Jensen who went off on a uh, high speed turn on the back stretch as well. Despite all of that, uh, Yosef Abdul Razak ended up in third yesterday in that first moto. And here is your uh, entry list so we can take a look at all the riders. Coming into this, we had 27 riders. Rashid El Tayer, of course, from the UAE, your current points leader, Marcus Jorgensen, Yosef Abdul Razak, Sam Johansson, Jeremy Perez, Andres Visneski, and Rasmus Hansen, along with Lino. And he was trying to teach me how to say his name, but I just still haven't figured it out. Rashid Aldawas, Christoph Agostino, Johan Johansson, Alejandro Miranda. Conrad Robel, Kylie Elmer, Salim Agathimi, Lorenzo Benalia, along with Andrea Dominguez, Yosef Agathimi, Abdul Al-Turki, Jan Jensen, Frederick Brandau, 
Matea Fercasa and Schlaben Sobek and Amir Atani from Lebanon. Ali Awanjawi and uh, Abu Bakr Almari rounding out your field. 26 riders, 25 plus one lap minutes. Hey there, and I have a uh, special guest joining us. As we get ready to go with uh, Parade of Nations, and I'll let you know, uh, these guys actually just getting lined up for that. And you can see uh, Yosef Abdul Razak up on the camera from Kuwait representing with his national flag as we get ready to go for the Parade of Nations. But before we do that, let's catch up with this fast young lady, Miss Eminelli York Dahl. Hello, hi. Hi. Well, let's start off real quick. How was yesterday after uh, that little bounce? Well, me and John were both pretty sore. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, big. Thank God, but I got some bruises, and I'm uh, yeah. It's it's not hundred percent. Yeah. You got within two seconds of Jessica Siobhan. You were setting up once again on that last lap for a pass. Looked very strong. Did any of that go through your head, or is it all move forward? Well, no, I didn't think about that because I know it wasn't Jonna. So <laughs> me and Jonna just said before the start, let's keep away from each other this moto, please. <laughs> Not do it again. Such good friends. Let me ask you too, how was the boat running? I know you had a couple of problems yesterday. Yeah, it's been actually a few problems during the whole weekend or the whole race here, but we managed to get it together and uh, make solid performance in every moto actually if you skip the last 15 meters of yesterday. <laughs> you know what, and it, it, it's interesting that you say that, multiple world champion, and it's all about the little things, right? And I love that you're just focusing on the important stuff. For Great sure. move and a fantastic ride, all three motos. And let's just say it, regardless, it was still an amazing and good entertainment. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least I can give you that. And you took, yeah. you took it in great spirits. <laughs> well, I'm so happy that we didn't end up like really tossed around bad because that could have ended so so bad i was thinking now she must let go and jana was thinking this time i'm not gonna let go <laughs> you know <laughs> it just ended up like it did but we learn and we we put it in the past and move forward now so and today this moto it was so tough yeah i was so tired and you know from all the yeah, it, it was it was tough, but I'm I'm happy we managed, and Jessica really deserved that win. I'm so happy for her. You did great. She did great. Congratulations again to Jessica, but you also rode your heart out. Good job, Eminelli Orton. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, back at it as we go for the runabout GP1, and you can hear these guys uh, firing the engines as we get ready for the parade of nations. Again, Jessica Siobhan takes the win. Yasmin E. Prouse in second, Estelle Pere in third. Those are the official. You can check all those uh, on the website once we get to the uh, official results. And I'll let you know on the men's key as soon as those official results are posted. And 
and we are just uh, waiting right now for the Parade of Nations. Let's take a look and see who is, who's where on this lineup. We've got Rashid Altair on the inside pole position. Marcus Jorgensen is in uh, that second off the pole. Christoph Agostino in third. Molina in uh, fourth on that inside. I see Andres Wisniewski right in the middle on that inside split. Along and right next to him, actually, his uh, buddy Conrad Robel from Poland as well. Looks like Ali Alanjawi is going to be lined up on the outside. Excuse me, he's on the inside, but he's on the outside of the inside. He's not the very last one. Looks like Amir Itani from Lebanon is going to be on the outside, outside of your inside split. Let's take a look at the pole position on the outside, and that is going to be... Yosef Abdul Razak on the pole on the outside. It's going to be Samuel Johansson in second next to him, and confirmation will be Jeremy Perez will be on the outside as well. Very interesting, uh, particularly with the tight conditions on the inside split. You've got very fast riders, Rashid, Jorgensen, Kristoff, Andres Wisniewski, Conrad Robel, and Ali Alanjawi all on that inside. 26 riders. They're going to go warm them up right now. You can see both uh, Wisniewski and Konrad Robel out with the uh, flag for Poland. Of course, Jeremy Perez riding for France. Marcus Jorgensen is riding with the UAE flag going for Team Sharjah this year. Just picked up a great, uh, a great sponsorship with Team Sharjah, so he's riding for them. This thing serves two purposes when these guys do the uh, Parade of Nations. It's an opportunity for see all of the different nations represented and for them to proudly carry those flags that they are riding for. It also gives the riders this chance to take a look at that start. They're able to do that uh, each time. And I love that it's an opportunity for them to check and see what changes have occurred on those splits. Make no mistake, a lot of the runabout riders were down here during the women's race and the men's race so they can see how those uh, starts and how the splits were timing out. Recap of yesterday, Rashid Altair proved his medal and rolled that lucky fiber boat across the finish line, just like he started in the first place spot. Perez had second locked in on the start. Yosef Abdul Razak stole it. But then you got to see the crash firsthand uh, on lap number eight. Pushed him back to sixth place, still ended up in third after all of that. Overall with the points. Perez yesterday got uh, penalized for missing a buoy. Put him back in fifth. And what the heck is going on with uh, Marcus Jorgensen? Starts in seventh place in a lovely bit of irony since that's his race number. And then promptly begins a charge that was both fearless and impressive. By the lap six, he was in third. And by lap nine, he was in second. With a 22 second gap between him and Rashid before the checkered came out. He had reduced that 20 second gap to only nine seconds. Great run for Marcus Jorgensen and Team Sarza.
Perez was in third for 13 of the 17 laps, not consecutively, mind you, but got nailed for that miss buoy. That left him in fifth. And another notable Wisniewski lister day went from ninth to sixth. That's a bit of the uh, recap of all the drama that you saw on runabout GP1. This is going to be the second of two motos, 25 minutes plus one lap. Well, hello, Janusz. Good to have you. Sarah Nadia saying go, Frederick. And we've got all the flags put away. These guys are ready to go as they get ready for this second moto on a beach start. All right, here's your official results for the men's ski. Stian Schvetlein, Nacho Armias in second. And it is going to be Kevin Redderer, despite 11th place in that first moto, got, or excuse me, second moto, got up into third. Congratulations to all three riders. Congratulations for the gentleman from Team Norway, Stian Schvetlein, taking the GP of Kuwait win. You can feel the uh, energy and the tension rising off of that water close to the beach as these guys get ready to go. And we talked a little bit about the crowds yesterday. And speaking of crowds, they are lined all across the beach right now, watching the big guns as they get them fired up. The card is up from the course marshal as he walks down the line. Oh, we've got a uh, two minute, two minute hold. And that was a lucky break for uh, boat number 24. That's uh, Salim Al Gathimi who. Uh, Looked like he snuck out there off that line a little bit. They got him back in line. And I don't see any hands up anymore. And I also hear the engine starting. So it looks like, let's see if the uh, marshal puts the card up. We're waiting. And the card is up. We're ready to go for moto number two at runabout GP1. Oh my, good start for Marcus Jorgensen. Couldn't have timed that better. Rashid Altair outpowered him right at the end. Out Rashid has got the whole shot on the inside split. Marcus Jorgensen in second on the inside. Outside, Yosef Abdul Razak. And Rashid Altair wasting no time jumping to the front stretch with a whole shot. Yosef Abdul Razak in second. And Jorgensen and Perez battling it out for third and fourth. Jorgensen's got the line. He's going to put Perez in that fourth place spot. Sam Johansson in fifth. Andres Wisniewski in sixth. action fact. Interesting. Marcus Jorgensen actually was first off of the line. I'm curious if was that too good a start. It looked good to me, but again, I don't have the angle, so we'll see if he does uh, get a time penalty for that, but it was fantastic, and he needed it. Rashid Altair has got a rocket ship back-to-back -back on uh, pole position times in that uh, pole position two. Rashid with a one two five three eight. That is the uh, record time for the track this weekend, posted by the gentleman aboard that number five boat. Rashid goes to the outside split. Looks like Yosef Abdul Razak will be following him. What a crazy story for this four-time Guinness World Record winner. And you can see the shock to the system as he yanked that turn on the final turn, jumping to the front stretch. Yosef with an injured shoulder, but he's riding like he's got no problems. An incredible run for uh, Mr. Yosef Abdul Razak in second and Jorgensen in third. Let's look at times. Altair with a 12182, just broke his own fastest time. 12440 for Yosef Abdul Razak and a 12719 in third for Jorgensen. Jeremy Perez in fourth with a 12971. Sam Johansson with a 13199. Wisniewski 
Martin is right there. He's in six, and it's Hansen, Rasmus Hansen in seventh, Lorenzo Benalia in eighth, Ali Alanjawi in ninth, and Johan Johansson in tenth. Brandau 11th, Aldewas in 12th. And the whistle's up uh, for one of the riders for time penalty. We'll see if they come in. You have two and a half laps to react to that if they call you for premature acceleration. It'll be a 20 minute uh, penalty. 20 second, excuse me, <laughs> 20 minute. 20 second penalty, you have to actually come into the beach. Yosef going to the outside, following uh, Rashid Altair. 3.17 seconds separating the two. Let's see if he reduces that time on this one. 2.59 is the difference between the top two riders. Jorgensen with 8.34 separating him. Perez. 13051 for his current lap time. Gonna need to pick that pace up. We've got Altair with a 12810 for his current lap time. Yosef Abdurazak, right side of the track as they go deep on uh, that back stretch. Big, big course, and the back stretch is shaped like a half moon, so it just doesn't give them any breaks on that right-hand turn at all. 1.9 kilometers. And we're about four and a half minutes into a grueling 25 minute plus one lap race. And yesterday we saw several boats encountering difficulties, including Yosef Abdul Razak on that back stretch. Watching Jeremy Perez as he works his way through the uh, series of buoys before the front stretch. Yosef and uh, Rashid Altair are getting in a ton of traffic on this front stretch. Rashid Altair going a little bit wide and that's a smart move to get the clear water. But I have seen Yosef take advantage of that in the past. Yosef stayed pretty tight to the buoys. Altair going to the inside of the uh, lap riders, and you can see Yosef following him. Yosef has a tendency to really excel in this lap traffic, and uh, he will continue to strategize how best to set up Rashid Altair. Rashid with a snappy boat. You'll notice the torque on the low end of that boat gets him in and out of those buoys very, very quickly. And uh, the guys that set up that boat have it handling very well. Watch him work that inside. And then he's going to try to set up Rashid Altair and get some clear water. You're watching uh, the battle between your top two. And Yosef trying to stay outside of that white water as they come into the splits. Yosef Abdul Razak goes to the inside, seeing if maybe he can overtake. Rashid in this lap. 2.45 seconds. He actually has increased time every lap. Let's see if that inside worked for him. He had the clean water from the inside. He actually lost a four one hundredths of a second, 2.98 on that. So drop back slightly for Yosef Abdul Razak. Now he's got some thinking to do. And there are no lap riders in front of him at the moment, 6.49. And Jeremy Perez also got his hands full with lap riders and powered through those guys off of the uh, front stretch. You're watching Rashid Altair. And look at the riding style for Rashid. You saw it a little bit yesterday. He's got some of the loosest body language up top. He stays very, very relaxed with his shoulders and his head. And he does that very intentionally, trying to keep uh, that dreaded arm pump from taking over. And he's got a very interesting riding style, almost like he's just half napping on the boat. Meanwhile, you've got the upright style of uh, Yosef Abdul Razak. 
Yosef protecting that shoulder as best as he can. Had a uh, pretty nasty series of shoulder injuries. He's done multiple dislocations, got a surgery done last year, and then re-injured it in Sharjah. So he had about a little over uh, 60 days to get that thing rehabbed as much as possible. There's Marcus Jorgensen, Marcus in third. After the second place finish in uh, Moto One. Marcus goes to the outside as well. He's riding very quietly. Yosef Abdul Razak, by the way, took the win yesterday in parallel slalom. And it was Jorgensen in second, Ali Alanjawi in third, and Sam Johansson in fourth in the uh, parallel slalom run. On that last lap, Yosef Abdul Razak with a 1-4-5 separation, so he went back down in time from the 298. Love the fact that we've had so many people uh, park right behind the course to watch the action this weekend. You've seen a lot of boats lined up on the horizon back there to uh, check these guys out. It's our first time in Kuwait City. We're here in Salmiya Bay. And it has been a great weekend of racing. And we've had a lot of crowds, more than uh, we thought we were going to get, actually, for people hanging out with us. You're watching Yosef Abdul Razak. And you can just see Marcus Jorgensen up in the corner of the screen as they go through. like 2.51 so it went from a 145 separation to a 251 as we are 10 minutes into this and can't help but wonder if Yosef isn't going to play a bit smart on this for the long game good strategist he's got to protect that shoulder for 25 minutes Jorgensen on this one with a 13956 Yosef Abdul Razak definitely a bit off this pace 14434 and Rashid Altair with a 14328. So Yosef has some strategy here. He's got to keep Jorgensen out of his back pocket. And he's got to keep uh, Rashid Altair from walking too far away from him. But he's also got to play smart. And Rashid Altair breaks down. Rashid actually broke down over by the wall. Wow, your race leader is under a tow hook. Well, we can just take that strategy and throw it out the window. Yosef Abdul Razak, your new race leader, Marcus Jorgensen in second. Wow, that's crazy. What a tough break for Rashid Altair, who was winning in a moto number one, took the win, and then now is broke with the <laughs> Joseph Abdul Razak in the lead. And uh, Jorgensen in second. And Altair right now under a tow hook. In fact, you can see Altair up on the beach right now. And a very upset rider. Again, Yosef Abdul Razak leading. Jorgensen second. And uh, Yosef just working lap traffic. He's on the left hand side again of this track. This is a very deep track. It's set up portrait style. If you were to look out over the water, it is a deep track back into Salmiya Bay. 
provides a lot of technical difficulty, particularly along that backstretch. And uh, yosef has got to be thinking about that just a little bit because he went off on the backstretch yesterday in uh, moto number one. Got back to his boat, managed to salvage to fourth place, uh, getting him up in third on the final on Moto One, but man, it was uh, tough. And the reason he was in fourth, but uh, Jeremy Perez and Mr. Bowie got docked for that, so that moved uh, Yosef up into third. So he is in a great position right now, leading with uh, 13 minutes on the clock. Jorgensen on the outside split here. We are looking at lap number eight for uh, Jorgensen will just be finishing lap nine. And lap time for Razak is a 13820 on that and 14044 for Jorgensen. Perez in third with a 13784. Sam Johansson in fourth with the Not right on that time. We'll get that to you. Thirteen fifty-eight. Visneski in that sixth place spot. Stretch, guys coming off of, and they come from there into a double, double, single, single setup, and the singles are very tight. Jorgensen on the inside. Yosef going to the outside, and I'm not sure. Actually, Jorgensen followed him. Follow to the outside. Yosef with the 14034 on that lap. Jorgensen with the 12710 as his fastest lap time. Let's take a look at the current one, a 14377 with all of the mess out on the water. And there is your defending world champion, Jeremy Perez, who is up in third. His current lap time is a 14315. Back to back wins of 2018 and 2019 for Jeremy Perez, and uh, all of that coming into six was in sixth place coming into that final round and Sharjah did not know that he had a shot at the uh, world championship. Nailed it anyway. I guess the question for 2020 is can he make it a hat trick for Jeremy Perez? Got to get to the podium first. He's in fifth right now as far as the uh, standings. On the track, he's up in third. Marcus Jorgensen Looks very solid this year, and man, he had a world championship locked in last year, going into Sharjah, was in the lead until the final lap, about eight buoys out, between five to eight buoys out, and he uh, broke one of the more heartbreaking moments in uh, racing history. Watching your race leader, Yosef Abdul Razak, in his hometown, leading with 16 minutes, 38 seconds on the clock for your second moto for runabout GP1. Of the three, I'd say that uh, Jeremy Perez has got the Cinderella seat. 17 minutes in, and uh, he looks incredibly quiet and relaxed out there. Yosef has got to be feeling a bit of pressure. And as always, he handles it so well. Four times he has brought it home for a uh, world title.
2019, his best, for all, all motos, his best finish was first, the Grand Prix of uh, Mediterranean, and then he ended up six overall at the World Championship, and that was due to uh, injuries and uh, motos breaking. Right now, it's no drama for Yosef with the 12440 fast time. His current is a 13572 for the lap time. And Jorgensen with a 16.91 deficit in uh, second place. And Jeremy Perez in third with a 2495 deficit from first. Moving down just a little bit, we got Johansson in fourth, Rasmus Hansen in fifth, Alan Jawi up in uh, sixth, Wisniewski in seventh. Benalia in eighth, Johan Johansson in ninth, Brandau in 10th, and Molina in 11th. In 12th, we have Aldewas, 13, Arahu, 14th, Alkathimi, and uh, in 15th, Elmers, and in 16th, it's Amir Itani, the gentleman riding for Lebanon. Sam Johansson is uh, currently in fourth place in order to protect his position on that podium he has to stay in that fourth or jeremy is going to have a shot to move up into third on the podium so sam has got to hold on to that uh fourth place that he has got currently on the track watching sam johansson on boat number four and you can see jeremy perez right in the middle of the upper part of the screen. That's your uh, gentleman in third place. for these boats. Lino Arahu at uh, the top of the screen and Jeremy Perez just moving by him as you see Yosef Abdul Razak on the front stretch. We're on to lap number 13 for Yosef. 14276 is the current lap time. Jorgensen with a 13460. And Jeremy Perez with a 13778. Jorgensen out of uh, Denmark. He's 24 years old, currently lives in Miami. Two UIM world titles uh, on the European tour in the uh, GP2 classes, but has yet to take a, a GP1 runabout world title. And he is on a hunt in 2020. When I got a chance to catch up with him this weekend, that was his number one focus after the uh, heartbreak in Sharjah last year. Riding for Team Sharjah now and is uh, very excited about how his boat's been going. He just hit that two single buoy turn that uh, you have to work on the right hand side of the track right before you go into the split section and he too is gonna work the outside. Seemed to have been his preference for most of this race. One three six five three, and Bizneski uh, is watching Jorgensen as he comes through and opens up and gives him the line. Jorgensen comes through with a one three eight six six, and he has narrowed the gap to a seven point two three differential between him and Yosef. shot and uh, taking a look at how that back stretch looks you can see it's a pretty sharp half moon turn these guys are required to go all the way out on that 1.9 kilometer course after they uh, take the final double red they come out to uh, that single buoy and then they've just got to lay on the gas 
for that sharp apex turn, or excuse me, that sharp 90 degree turn out there, but it is wicked to uh, have to work through those waves. Jans Jensen got sideways on it. Uh, Yosef Abdul Razak had troubles on the backstretch yesterday, and uh, Matea Fracasso also indicating that he had been having some problems, although he went off on the front stretch. It actually had, had some problems on the backstretch as well. There's Yosef Abdul Razak, and you can see the water grabbing the uh, hole of that boat on the front stretch. Again, these waves coming in and uh, off camber to the shore. And that is uh, causing these guys quite a bit of drama. And that's probably part of what happened yesterday with the two ladies as well. We've seen uh, high speed dismounts both on the back stretch and the front stretch this weekend. Right, very smooth and quietly. We got 23 minutes on the clock. Depending on when uh, Yosef comes in and hits this one, we look like probably two more laps. Before we get a white flag, we'll see where he ends up after uh, he comes through. One, two, four, four, oh, his fastest time. Still didn't beat uh, the track record. That was Rashid Al Tayer with a 12182, who had the uh, fastest time over the weekend. He had a current uh, before he came into moto number two, and that one was a 125 until uh, today, and then uh, nailed that 121 before he broke down. So, again, Rashid Al Tayer watching as the other riders uh, going through the last couple of minutes of this course, but. Definitely a shout out to uh, him for an incredible weekend of racing, despite the incredibly tough finish for him. All right, as he comes in, one more lap before he's going to get the white flag for Yosef Abdul Razak. One, three, six, eight, two, and we're on lap number 16 for these guys. your chance to see just part of that technical uh, section on the left hand side that comprised of a triple two singles double triple all from a right hand course I know from a stand up perspective that can be incredibly uh, hard on you if you're not used to practicing going on the right hand side but for the sit down riders it can be a trick as well. Main thing here is just maintain fuel. Don't want to run out of fuel and they don't want to run out of energy. Boats seem to be holding together with 28-42. And the gentleman from Kuwait is going to be looking for a white flag on this next lap. If he happens to win on this one after just a little bit longer, we'll find out. He dedicates all of his victories to his country and his president, talking about Yosef Abdul Razak aboard the double aces. And that's him hitting the front stretch. Lapped riders ahead of him. White flag is out for Yosef Abdul Razak. Okay, well, now's the real mental mind game. He's used to it. It never gets easier, though. He's got to focus on the next 20 some odd buoys and uh, make sure that that boat stays together. You're watching the final few moments of the uh, Grand Prix of Kuwait for the Runabout GP1 class. And it is all about Abdul Razak, the local home product here for the city of Kuwait. Followed by Marcus Jorgensen and Perez and Johansson. And again, Johansson can't move off of that number four spot. If he does, Perez is going to have an opportunity to get on the podium. Well, actually, just taking a look at those points, Sam and Jeremy might be tied in points. And if that's the case, then uh, Jeremy has a chance to get that if he stays where he is. Jeremy.
does have an opportunity for a podium. No official stuff until uh, we get that posted on the website, but I'm just giving you some hints. Yosef Abdul Razak. As a checkered flag comes up, he takes a look over. Congratulations to boat number 11. And what a feeling and what a change in destiny after that dismount off the backstretch yesterday. Came all the way back, won this moto. Congratulations, he's currently got uh, 45 points. Let's see what happens. And uh, if he's gonna get the overall. Yosef Abdul Razak, and then it is gonna be Marcus Jorgensen for second. coming across that line and Jeremy just took a quick look over his shoulder before he hits the front stretch and there's your defending world titleist Jeremy Perez as he comes through at third and also a big sign of relief. Sam Johansson hits it in fourth. All right, unofficially, I've got it as uh, Yosef Abdul Razak with the win, Marcus Jorgensen at second, and Jeremy Perez for third. I'll wait till the official call, but that's how it looks right now. Either way, incredible run for uh, Yosef Abdul Razak, four time world champion in the Guinness Book of World Records. And you can see that happy face. From, uh, and a happy reaction from Yosef Abdul Razak. Sorry, the screen went off there temporarily. Back. Yeah, what, what a feeling it must be if uh, he gets the opportunity to take the Grand Prix in his home country at the season uh, opener and our first ever UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Tour in Kuwait City. And uh, Yosef Abdul Razak, unofficially the Grand Prix champion. And you can see as he uh, takes the win for Boto number two, he's gonna come down and do the parade lap and well deserved. Very, very well deserved and so happy. Got two sisters uh, and um, got the opportunity to meet one of his sisters yesterday. She was here uh, all day watching and came back out today as well. Many of his friends and his family out here. Uh, he's helped with a lot of the logistics with us to uh, be able to come out to Kuwait City and what an incredible honor for him to be able to represent for the country of Kuwait and to have won in motor number two. Such a beautiful soul and such a warrior, Yosef Abdul Razak. And what a great day of racing. Jet Ski Republic, these guys are going hard. I totally agree. Congratulations from Bittman Bergman to Yosef. Yeah. Yania Jacobet saying, good job, number seven, and Nico Russ racing. And yeah, no kidding, Nico Russ, by the way, the mechanic for Marcus Jorgensen. Uh, and an incredible run for him, too. I absolutely agree. Again, unofficially, Yosef uh, will take the overall. Marcus will be second, and Jeremy will be third after the, uh, no, he had a tie with that third place finish. Um, and if that is true, if that tie is true, I'm just gonna check the numbers, make sure on the official. But uh, if that tie is true, then Jeremy will have the uh, better score because the tiebreaker would be, it counts more in the second moto. All right, well, I have to catch my breath. I don't know about you guys, but that was, uh, that was nuts. 25 minutes of madness. Well, we're gonna slow down the speeds, but we're gonna speed up the adrenaline with uh, freestyle, which is gonna be coming at you next. And you can see their uh, cue down there talking to uh, Yosef Abdul Razak and getting the um, interview.
<laughs> yeah, he looks uh, he looks so happy. Great view of the beach. As we start to wrap up for a great day. What a gorgeous afternoon and what a change in weather for the last three days. Uh, just when we had gotten in here, it was five degrees in the morning, very chilly, high winds. And uh, this beautiful day dawned with uh, 70 degree temperatures and uh, beautiful, beautiful sunny skies. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Grand Prix of Kuwait. As we wrapped up the closed course racing in Aquabike, we are going to be uh, switching to the princes of altitude. That's going to be our freestyle guys coming at us next. And interesting watching uh, heat number one yesterday. Almola played the long game for his first heat with a very smart routine, but I noticed that he didn't do very many one-hander or one-footer moves, making sure that he was protecting that fractured shoulder. That strategy paid off for him as he finished at the number one spot yesterday. Mariani for second, and uh, Paolo Nunez with his spectacular performance got third, Yurislav Turner in fourth, and that's how it stands as we move into our final day of competition for freestyle as well. And speaking of Rashid Al Mula, let's catch up with him. I feel so good because uh, Rashid the tire he went also on his moto and Emily he did good. Uh, I'm trying to push very hard to win to be with these guys also. All right, so we're gonna, right after uh, we get the opportunity to um, interview him for Kuwait TV, we're also gonna interview him for the live stream as well. Meanwhile, chatting a little bit more about uh, freestyle. We've got a three minute routine that uh, we'll be doing for each one of the freestyle competition. Riders, we have a maximum of 10 riders and the way they're gonna break down those points, get upwards of 100 points. So they're going to be looking today for a variety of tricks, 30 for quantity, style, uh, and they are going to be looking for uh, like special editions, right? If you remove hands or feet when you are doing uh, one of the tricks, all of that will help. Ronald Self, I agree, an amazing racing. Freddy Cicada, thank you for listening in all the way from Puerto Rico. Daniel Estevas, vamos Molina, that was a great one. In Colombia, representing for Andrea Dominguez. She did really good today, too. I'd have to say one of the more uh, spectacular finishes really belongs to uh, Salman Alawadi, who had a, a great finish today as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's who I want. <laughs> Yes, Salman. He's actually going to get Salman while we have uh, Rashid Al Mola out there warming up. Salmin actually uh, chooses to go first. as we do our warm-up. No, you're right here. Right here, bud. <laughs> okay, while we're getting ready, um, I actually had the opportunity to catch up with Yosef Abdul Razak. You've been a busy, busy guy this weekend. Yes, uh, busy for good reasons. And uh, we had a difficult race. It was a very hard competition. And uh, I'm very happy to win both the Salalum World Champion uh, racing Kuwait and the uh, title here. I have to say it was interesting to watch you yesterday. Uh, you were up in that second place spot and then suddenly off the back stretch, disaster struck. As usual, the uh, strategist worked his way through that. But what were your thoughts when you were airborne? Um, as, can, as you can see, there is a lot of yachts over there and a huge waves come. Even in this race in Moto2, we had a couple of huge uh, waves as well. Uh, Unfortunately, I hit one wave very badly, and it took me off. Yeah, but but you recovered. I recovered. I got back and uh, got third, and uh, took the title in Moto2 as well. Yeah, you know, it's not the disasters that hit us. It's how we handle them. It it, yeah, it was, it was a hard uh, task for me, and uh, I had to give everything, you know. It's the first world title in Kuwait, and I wanted to be, to be perfect, and uh, we did it. Describe your feelings right now. Uh, amazing, amazing. Can't wait to hear the national anthem. Mm. Yosef, thank you so much. Thanks for being here, and thanks for helping us be here thank for you. the uh, season opener. Thank you, Don. You're welcome, sir. Congratulations. And we are back live as we get ready to go. We're still trying to uh, grab some of the riders for uh, interviews, including uh, Saman Alwadi. Give you some of the uh, pictures of what it looks, what our view is like here in Kuwait City. The uh, areas where we have all of the uh, boats staged. The paddocks are stacked um, pretty deep back there throughout the parking lot in uh, the Merida Bay. And you are looking out over Salmia Bay. And if you look just up over that rock wall, you can see the three uh, towers, the Kuwait Towers, an iconic building that is very famous here in uh, Kuwait City. Just getting ready for our freestyle to uh, get rolling. And as we do, I'll check in on the live feed. While we are waiting for uh, the next competition to get rolling, here's a couple of things about this beautiful city. They boast 499 kilometers of coastline in the country of Kuwait. And their population is uh, 2.9 million, and they share borders with Iraq and Saudi Arabia. And Kuwait, interestingly, is made up of nine islands. Oh, and I can hear the uh, sound of an engine getting rolling in the background. That's Yaroslav Turner, who is going to be uh, going first today. Yaroslav from the Czech Republic. Got a team, Extreme Boat. His first win ever was the uh, Czech Championship in 2005. He's 41 years old and uh, lives in Lota, 
the Czech Republic, and he is riding a classic machine. The Team Extreme boat, nice opener for a barrel roll, backflip, backflip, and he walks those backflips into the beach. A big 180, rides it out. Backflip, backflip. 180, 180, 180. You're watching Yaroslav Turner. Two more quick 180s and he rides those as well. Just a slight bobble on the side, but I love how quickly uh, this very athletic freestyle competitor recovers from it. Good barrel roll and a backflip. He's known for big combinations and he's pulling off a great one right here. Kicking the bottom of that tray if you are uh, not used to watching freestyle. That's one way for those guys. They need to lock those feet in. So that he can do an aerial maneuver. Three minute routine gives them plenty of time to uh, take breaks in between. If they need it. Big back flip. Super stuffed it slightly. Managed to ride that out. And it'll be a slight detraction in points. Nice little setup wave goes into a backflip, and he's going to do a series of combination backflips. And he walks those into the beach, very shallow bay. And a risky maneuver, love the way that looked. Five backflips and a 180. And then goes right back out to uh, set up for some more. He too has a pretty customized foothold on that. Doesn't backflip, unable to complete the full rotation. Drops down briefly in the tray, but still saves it. Super sub rides it out. That's going to be uh, the completion of the time for Yaroslav Turner. And you can see the Kuwaiti flag going over Salmiya Bay. bring in uh, Yaroslav, we're going to have our next competitor come out, and that is a gentleman out of Portugal that will be up next. And as they get the boat back up on the on the uh, tray,
Nice rotation for that backflip. Got aggressive and went for a double. Backflip, 180. And another quick 180, 180. Three sixty. Good combination for uh, Paulo Nunes. It's the first person to ever have a jet ski in Portugal. This is notable all by itself. I think one of the cool things about this couple is they both love beekeeping. Nice backflip for Paulo. He's going to set this boat up again. And again, they have to create their own wakes. And not only do they have to create their own weight, but they got to make sure they're hitting at the right angle. And that is absolutely the right angle. Nice backflip for Paolo Nunes. 180, rides it out. Nice part of this combination with another 180. Another good setup. Plenty of time for the rotation on that backflip. Landed it uh, almost vertical. Good recovery for Paolo. And another backflip. So you can see how he is in this surf, trying to make sure that the uh, setup wave is good for him, a good 360, and he lands that with a one-hander. Another 360. 360. Really got the uh, handlebar cranked down so that he can make sure that that bar stays exactly where he wants it during the uh, aerial maneuvers. And another backflip for him. And he's taking a look at the flag to see where he's at on the time. Three minutes is what these guys have. <laughs> and that's going to do it, actually, for the time. For Paolo Nunes, goes out and uh, waves to the crowd. And a good finish for this gentleman from Portugal, Paulo Nunes. Ended up in third yesterday. And he has got a uh, shot at the podium at the Grand Prix of Kuwait. Up next is going to be a gentleman from Italy. And you can see Paulo getting some pointers and some congratulations from Rashid Al Mola. What a perfect finish to an incredible weekend that we would have 70 degree temperatures. See, every time I talk about him, I just can't help but smile. And he's definitely one of the crowd favorites. Hails from Italy, been on the uh, UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Tour for many years. You are watching Roberto Mariani, 14 year veteran, in fact, 14. Seems to be the lucky number for him. He's got 14 Aquabike podiums between 2014 and 2018. He's a coach builder in his day job.
and a Kaloom stick in his night job. Just kidding. <laughs> he does like to uh, always paint those boats very brightly. One year it was reverse. Black with yellow, and then this uh, year it is yellow with the black and then the black wrap. Always very festive and very fun to watch. Big scene, old school and new school. Great opening combination, three backflips, a 180, and then another backflip. One eighty, one eighty, one eighty. Sets up for another backflip. Barrel roll. Oh, I thought he had that. Now that's uh, a typical happenstance, it seems, on uh, this front stretch area with these waves coming in. You can't really see how big they are. They're just little sleeper waves, but uh, that's what just pushed him. And it rolled him over briefly on the side. Nice recovery for Roberto Mariani. And that's what we were talking about, that old school and uh, new school mixture. He does a little super sub. And a big Superman throw, and it's a signature move for both him and uh, Yaroslav Turner actually generally puts in at least one throw. Three sixty, one eighty, and another one eighty into a backflip, and a three sixty, one eighty. And there's some more old school for you. Uh-oh, almost. And accidentally pulled the lanyard. We've seen that a couple of times this uh, weekend. Just checking, I'll uh, take a look real quick on the finals to make sure that we've got those. Good uh, 360 into a backflip, had a 360 180. There's the big ghost rider, a very risky move and a huge move for Roberto Mariani. <clears throat> and that's the whistle that's going to complete the routine. issue with that lanyard so he's going to uh, do a final wave for the crowd and bring it back in once again for Roberto Mariani from Italy great job <laughs> always 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 one of the crowd favorites it just never fails I don't know what it is about his energy but it's been uh, the entire tour every year just like that and 14 years for this Jet Revolution sponsored man, AKA the Wolf, 49 years young for Roberto Mariani. <clears throat> Gonna have our finer competitor coming at us next, Rashid Al Mola, your defending world champion. With 15 aqua bike podiums, 11 first, three seconds, and only one third, he rides for Team Abu Dhabi. Coming at you next is going to be Rashid Al Mulla.
And this guy is some kind of warrior. <clears throat> so right before we got down to the uh, Grand Prix of Kuwait last week, he fractured his shoulder and proceeded to compete anyway, which is risky business. The shoulder's aligned right now. So despite the fact that he's got that fracture, everything's you know still in alignment. But any crazy maneuver or... Uh, any dismount off of that boat that is at all uncontrolled could be really disastrous for him and the start of this tour. And yet, he needs to get some points on the board, so he played it very smart yesterday. He did not use the whole three-minute routine, but what he did use of it, he put to very good use. Let's see what he does today. I would not expect a whole lot of um, tricks where he's doing a one-hander or one-footer. Nice barrel roll opener. Beautiful backflip, another big barrel roll backflip. But you'll notice he's not taking his feet off like he normally does, and he's not throwing any hands up in the air. Needs to maintain control of the boat and stay center. Yesterday was very precise as well in all of these tricks, and his combinations weren't quite as long, but man, everyone he laid down was perfect. And he did it right there too in a nice no-hander lander. Took the hands off, did the no-hander lander when he knew he could control it. He's playing very smart again today. You're watching Rashid Al Mullah. Took the win yesterday, needs to lock this one in. And he will be going to the top of the podium if he does. 540, backflip. Barrel roll. Nice degree of difficulty for these. And another barrel roll, backflip. Backflip. He went for it. He did a one-footer off camber uh, 360. Or you could call that an off-axis. Right, that out. Does another setup. You can see the big team Abu Dhabi stickers on the side. Extreme boat. Beautiful. Nice landing. See, he's being smart and precise. Five forty backflip. A little bit over the front of the boat again, protecting the shoulders. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did a uh, hood kicker, yeah, did a one-footer landing, and you can see he went off on the side of the boat. <clears throat> it's just a bit hard to maintain that stabilization. Very impressed that he's going for the uh, little extras here. He watched Roberto Mariani's routine, and it was solid, so I know he's wanting to make sure he's got enough points on the board to uh, protect this lead going into this final round. <clears throat> Good rotation on the backflip, and into another barrel roll, and a backflip for Oh, that was nice for Rashid Al Mullah, and he lands it with the no hander. That was solid and a good confidence builder, and the red flag is up. So that's going to complete his routine for our last competitor in the freestyle. And all that stuff, well, that's just gratuitous and fun for the crowd. He's already off the clock. He's just giving some extra love to Kuwait City. And even though he's injured, he just can't resist going out there and playing. <laughs> You're watching Rashid Al Mala, your defending world champion, riding for Team Abu Dhabi as a uh, he makes the perfect wrap to a picture-perfect day and a picture-perfect weekend here in Kuwait. 
You've been watching the season opener for the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Tour and our very first visit to Kuwait, and we couldn't have done it any better than that. I want to thank you guys all for joining us, and I do believe that's going to be a wrap for our stay here. We will see you soon. Stay tuned to aquabike.net to see where we'd be going next. We've got a big tour ahead of us and a big year as we span the globe between Europe, Middle East, and Asia. I'm Don Tossin on behalf of me and all of the crew for H2O. We'll see you at the next event.